I guess. Hey everybody, it's Linda G. Comancho Psycho, and I'm here with my <laughs> dear friend <laughs> Kelly Mah Mahoney. Maroni. Maroni. <laughs> I always pronounce her last name. She also okay. has a married name. Do you go by that too? Um, not professionally, no. Uh -uh. I put it on there so people know that I'm married and so that our friends see that I respect our marriage. Yeah. So we don't tell anybody about you being with Brad Pitt now. I can't believe you said that on the air. Oh my God. No, no, it's just a joke. No, we're kidding. We're kidding. We're Kelly kidding. Pitt. Kelly Pitt. No, I know. We're, we're Actually, kidding. your husband's a very wonderful man. His name's Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. He knows it's a joke. Yes, he does. He's, he's got a good sense of humor. He really does. It's kind of evil, but that's, I like that. Yeah, that's, yeah. And, and you know, the main thing is that you're comfortable with him and things are good. I'm okay. lucky. God so, knows. God only I knows. I want to talk about when, how I met you. Because oh, I was okay. looking back at that. This is a great story, you guys. Well, it was because she was on my favorite soap opera, Ryan's Hope. And when I used to write, watch Ryan's Hope, my daughter was born in 1975. I was pregnant, and I'd get up at let I'd get up and get my coffee and sit down and watch Ryan's Hope at 11 o'clock in the morning. And Mary Ryan was pregnant on the show, so I was relating. And they had this Irish family and all these people and these characters. And then I. I, one night I had a dream that Mary Ryan was replaced by another actress. They announced it, the part of Mary Ryan will be replaced and I was already disappointed in the dream. And then she had this baby girl, which I ended up having a baby girl. And I told my ex-husband at the time, now, but I told him at the time, you never guess I had this dream. I'm so glad it was just a dream. I dreamt that they replaced the character actress Mary Ryan with another actress and you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, lady, you've been watching too many soap operas. <laughs> well, I sat down with my coffee at 11 o'clock. The part of Mary Ryan would be played by somebody else. And, mm -hmm. and then she Nicolette had Nicolette Goulet. Girl. Yeah. So then they were repeating Ryan's Hope probably in 2010, 20, 2009 or 10. Yes, up to a point, and then they didn't have the music rights for the rest of it, so they had to keep repeating the old stuff over and over again. They could never get to the new stuff because they didn't have the music rights. That's what happened in the business is all the rights got so um, fragmented, like somebody would have the music rights, and another person would have the DVD rights, and the other person would. And so just trying to figure out who had what, that's why a lot of things didn't come out or it took them a long time. And a good <laughs> portion of what you were doing got cut. My whole thing. Because you, you were such yeah. a brat in that. <laughs> and she That's was just a child in New York. She was that just was, a child. It was such a great part. And yeah, I got to you do, were I, so mean. <laughs> I was so scared too. I, you know, I, I thought everybody's going to think that's who I am. No. But, but, but you were just a child out there in New York. Yeah, and well, I got our delicious part. Well, I was Lolita and, and I got to, um, it, it was kind of like it, it was a, a lot of therapy for me too because i got you know when you grow up and you have all this anger and you it takes you forever and ever and ever to work out your feelings as a grown-up right i right. had to go in there and do that stuff and i had to come up with it somehow right and schaefer really helped me she made it she made it okay for me because those things you know you, especially right. in the midwest you just didn't admit to or let out at, for any reason and i had to yeah, and you oh, always you talk know. very fond of Louise. Yes. And, and she's, hi, Louise. Hi, Louise. Was, Louise lives in New York right now, and she's been quarantined just the same as everybody else. Right, and she's writing books, right? Or she yes, writes she books? Yes, she is. Yeah. She writes um, mysteries. Ooh. And she always wanted to do that. Way back when we were sitting in these little, you know, you think it's glamorous, it's not glamorous, little tiny uh, dressing rooms the size of a closet. Like, we're here, this is, you know, this is about as far as away as we were. And then our clothes were here and then the door was behind me. And that was it, it was a closet. And she would talk about the, the books that she wanted to write. And that's what she did. She focused it and she did that. So I think I went on MySpace, right? Was I on MySpace? Like, oh, gosh, was it MySpace? It was MySpace. And I saw, cause I remember I thought, you know, I thought what a great actress. And I looked you up and I wrote you a fan letter. 
Well, I wouldn't say it was a fan letter. I was blown away by this letter, you guys. She remembers more than me. <laughs> I got this letter and and she Linda reached out to me and she said she could feel that I was going I was going through a lot of stuff at the time and she felt it. And then she said, you know, um, I don't think you called yourself a psychic, but you called, but it was something like that. And um, and you said, uh, I have cancer right now, but when I'm over it, I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> and I went, what? You yeah. have, you're you're taking the time to write to me when you're going through that. Yeah, that's Linda, you guys. And that's we ended up being amazing. fast friends. She's and you are intuitive too, my my friend. You help me through a lot of stuff, you know. No, you don't go out reading others, but you, you're very I did intuitive. Every so often I did, but not very often. Right, right. But also, um, Kelly has been in some really fun, great movies. She was, call them all. Oh, okay. So after I, when I was on the soap opera, I went and did Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And then they brought me back for another year. And then from then, it's kind of weird how you get a part and then somebody sees you do that and they think, oh, you know, since she, I saw her do that, she'd probably be good for this and work kind of begets work. So the guy, so I did this, it's a cult movie, but a lot of people have seen it called Night of the Comet. It's about, I have a comet. Oh, have these two valley girls who are the last people on earth. And I got that part because he said, you know, I'd like to have somebody like that, that's that annoying cheerleader in Fast Times. And they said, we can actually get you that annoying cheerleader. And that's how I got that, because he'd seen me in Fast Times. And then I got this movie. Okay, now, I took so much crap for doing this movie, but I'll tell you what, it's a cult classic now. And I, I'm always invited to go places and talk about this movie. And it's funny because the whole time, oh, for years and years and years, I just thought, what did they do that for? So it all works out in the end, if you, you know. But uh, it's called Chopping Mall. It wasn't called that when we signed up to do it. It was called... Uh -huh. Anyway, I turned into this thing called Chopping Mall. Um, and I got that because he'd seen me in Night of the Comet. He said, I want somebody like spunky like that that's going to survive. And because um, I play, we call it in show business terms, it's in, you know, cult movie terms, it's the final girl, which means you're the one who fights. I don't know why you wait till all your other little friends are dead before you do it. But I do. <laughs> I wish I went for everyone to die and then I finally get mad. And I... <laughs> <laughs> and I thought uh, whatever is getting us, whether it's a monster or a, a killer or a killer robot or a, a comet or whatever it happens to be. And so um, that's what a final girl is. She's the one that that takes charge of the bad thing at the end. And awesome. The, yeah, I love I love that. I'm always so screaming at these movies. There was a movie that done in the UK when the lights go out. Ooh, it sounds good. Girl, it's scary. It's a true story, but I think they overplayed it, but it's a true story. And there's a group, do you remember that show, Most Haunted? Yes. It doesn't play in the U.S. as much anymore. Well, they went there for two nights, and it was, I was like at the edge of my seat. It's on YouTube, Most Haunted at, it's not Hill House, but it's a house that, look up when the lights go out. Anyway, okay, I got the video, and it's fantastic. All right, I really loved Hill House. They just did that. I like scary movies. You Me know, too. I always have kind of. Me um, too. <laughs> so <laughs> when I re read you, did I get, get some things correct for you? Are you kidding? You got everything correct. <laughs> it was crazy. I would, uh, you know, and then I would feel like, oh gosh, you know, I, I can't always be asking Linda. <laughs> I know. We got to where we're kind of dependent because we we're both going through I went through oh. cancer, you went through. And then oh, I invited okay. you up. Um, we had a little event up in Benicia. Yes, and that's and one place I got to read people. And I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you did it for fun. It was no yes. big. But Josh Gates was one of the people we had there. What a nice guy. Yes. Really nice guy. He's from Destination Truth and yeah. um, another one. I can't think of it. Something, I don't know. It doesn't matter. So, what other projects are you working on? Or are well, you? Um, I had to come back and, and because I got so known as that kid with the 80s hairdo, you know, that it was very hard for me to overcome it. But um, slowly but surely I have been. I was an um, evangelist on True Blood, which was awesome. And that I got because Alan Ball's a big fan. Um, he, he loves those cult movies. Who knew? You know, and, and so, yeah, that was. And weird. that ended up being a great show. 
it did. I, I, I wish that I, I was supposed to be a recurring character, but you know, actually, if you're gonna, vampires versus uh, born again Christians, who's gonna win? Wasn't much of a fight. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> so that, that story didn't really go where I wanted it to go. But I mean, I didn't have any say over it. I just came in to play the part. Right. Um, but now uh, I, I've got this horror comedy coming out with a whole bunch of horror people called um, Exor This is the weirdest title ever. Exorcism at 60,000 feet. Guess what it's about? You know, I always right. say, guess what it's about? Right. But it's got uh, all sorts of horror icons in it. Um, Adrian Barbeau and... Um, Bill Mosley and Lance Henriksen and I mean you name it. When's um, it coming out? It's uh, it's going to stream on May fifth. It's not for everybody. I call it a boy stoner comedy, and um, ooh, uh, exorcism in the air. Hello. Yeah, but it's funny too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's gross. There's a lot of really boy stoner boy gross gags in it. So okay, it's that it's that kind of thing. Um, it's not, not my usual thing that I do. Right. And then right. Uh, I did a, a short film. I got to play an alcoholic um, um, cougar. And it was a comedy, though. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, we won a comedy festival, which people know me in horror, and then they don't realize that I do comedy, or people know me from comedy or soaps, and they don't know I do the horror thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not integrated. But it was really important for me to do a lot of different stuff so that looking like I look now because when I was on the soap and, when, and those other movies, I looked like a, a kid. So yeah. I'm not the same person. I'm not gonna play those parts and I'm not the same at all. Right. So it's kind of like starting over again at in, in the present day. And I got a, um, an HP Lovecraft um, movie that it's, it's still being worked on. It's still in post-production. So I don't know when that's coming out, but that's a whole different character too. Um, and um, what else have I, oh, so on May 8th, it's a, it's a short film, but it was going to be a whole, I did a couple of short films, but this is going to be a whole production. And again, again, it's like about the end of the world because I got this, um, sort of my brand is, oh, it's the end of the world, call Maroney, you know? Um, Hi. So it is called A Well-Respected Man. And I haven't seen it yet, but I hear, I hear that they're very happy with it. And it's going to be because of course because of social distancing we can't have the premiere and the party and all the hoopla um so we're going to do it online instead and it's very cheap it's only like four dollars to be online. Oh, i'm signing up yeah and um um then it's free for uh service men and, and women and um um it's just it's just a thing of i don't know i can't wait to see it i haven't seen Me it myself. Too. i'm looking forward and then and if you'll give me the links that I can oh, get people and I'll put it on this video, you guys. So, and yeah. she has, you have a fan page too? I have, uh, okay, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my name, Kelly Maroney. And I'm on Facebook, uh, actress Kelly Maroney and um, uh, Kelly Maroney official Facebook group, fan so, group. What do you think about this virus and the, the, the show business? It must be terrible in New York for Broadway, first of all. It must oh. be just awful. Because yeah. even if they open it up, it's gonna be a while before people really wanna gather. But I really am craving a, a picture. I wanna to go to a movie. That's one of my favorite things to do. And get popcorn and- Yes, yeah. I love a movie. But what know, do you think, too. what's the business? Is the business gonna change because of this or? Yeah, well, first of all, there's so many things online. A lot of people are saying, well, we didn't have to meet in line, you know, in person. Now we're finding out most of our meetings, we either didn't have to have, or we could have had it in five minutes on Zoom. And there's really no point for us to be driving across town all the time. So that's, I mean, a, a lot of things are meetings and auditions and things like that are gonna happen on online. Zoom. And they're talking about, I don't know how this is going to work. I really right. don't. But right. one of the ideas is, um, and, oh, and you know, the director, Steven Soderbergh, who did the movie Con Contagion, if you haven't yes. seen that, oh gosh, it's really good. And it's really, he talked to um, um, the, C, um, the CDC about what would really happen. He went in and said, okay, what's, what's your worst nightmare? What's going to happen? You know, what are you afraid is going to happen? And it's not a question of if it's when. And he wrote that. So that's why that movie is so on the money. So the Directors Guild has made him in charge of getting people back to work for the directors. 
Wow. That's what he's talking about. He had a medical background and everything before. Yeah. But what they're talking about for us, and we don't, I don't know that this is going to happen, but it's one of the ideas that's being kicked around is that they take the cast and they quarantine them for 14 days. And then, then they shoot and they're quarantined while they're shooting. And then it's a limited amount of crew and, and other people that need to be there. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I know, know how that's going to well, go. Well, listen, if people are getting paid, they'll be happy to do it. They'll put well, up with it until this it starts. You know we're coming up with a vaccine. Yeah, we have to. There'll be a vaccine. This will be eradicated. That I see. I, can, I don't know why I know what I know, but that I see. But um, have to. Um, so I think auditions online is way easier. I think that's way better. Well, there's a lot less driving and parking and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right now the universe is getting clean because nobody's. Yes. What is it like in LA? Is it? It's beautiful. Oh, it's, yeah. The animals all came back. There's deer. There's, I mean, you name it. Cause I live at the bottom of the Hollywood Hills. There's uh, everything just came out and all the plants are in bloom and it's, and the sky is blue. It's beautiful. Is it really? I love it. I don't recall seeing LA really beautiful. Girlfriend, the, one of the last times I was there in Los Angeles, I was driving. Um, well, I saw you well, the last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The time before that, I had the kids and we went to Universal Studios. We were driving on the freeway and there was some, um, what do you call that stuff that's on deserts, that rolling tumbleweed? Tumbleweeds. On the freeway. Yeah. I was like, what in the world? Yeah. We forget it's a desert. They pump water in here. Otherwise, we wouldn't have anything. It's a desert. This girlfriend, I am so excited. And I got to tell you, I don't know who's going to write the screenplay, but we're going to have some good movies come out after this administration heads out. Oh, I think so. Too. Just the movie on Mueller and Barr alone. What, I what think he so. went through. I just feel like, you know, oh my God, Academy Award nomination. Diamond know who plays Bill Barr, though. That will be a tough one. Got to be very flatlined. Yeah. 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 Who do you think will play, play Trump? Oh, I don't know. What a tour de force that would be. Well, you know, they, they really can do makeup and stuff. They make people yeah. look. Well, Vice. Um, I'm friends with uh, uh, the woman that uh, her son did Vice. Mc McKay. McKay. He's the director. Yeah, McKay. He won an Academy Award for another show that he did. Anyway, um, that makeup they did, that guy is probably the guy who played in Vice, who played Cheney. Mm, oh, oh, oh. He's, he is really, based on what they're saying, one of the nicer guys in show business, just a doll. Yeah, a lot of people that play villains and stuff are actually the nicest people. Really nice. Really good person. It's really strange. And they way. also have Pass cross with Brad Pitt, and they said he's really a really nice guy. Yeah, so he's I like, hear. I've, I've right actually in the middle of things. Not met him in reality, but I, I hear I, I'm waiting. Nice. I'm waiting any time now. I guess he's supposed to call me, but anyway. Um, but he's just a kind person. That's what mm -hmm. you like to see. I hate hearing bad news about anybody. I do too. I do too. It's disappointing. You know what I just remembered? What? You and I, and I didn't even know who you were. But when I looked at you, I remember looking at you thinking, who, she looks familiar. Um, that place in Colorado, that haunted place, that hotel. Are you still there? You froze there oh, for a second. That's okay. Yeah, okay. The, the place in Colorado, the hotel. Oh, the Colorado. Stanley? The Stanley yeah. where they did you the shining? Yeah, there as a special guest with the guy that was running it. The, it was, uh, I think, Ghost Hunters. Oh, 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 no, you know what that was? Uh, wrong place, though. It was the Queen Mary. And it was oh, Dave did I Schrader. see you at the Queen Mary? Okay. It was at it the, was the Queen event. Mary. It was the Ghost Hunters events. Yeah. Those used to be fun. And you, you were there. And uh, I remember seeing you and thinking, and little did I realize, you and I hadn't met yet. I no. wasn't diagnosed with cancer yet. No. And I remember thinking, God, she looks familiar. If they had have said Ryan's Hope, I'd have been like, who was she on Ryan's Hope? But yeah. Yeah. See, that's the thing. As you grow Our up, and people have knowing, you, you look completely different than you used to look. So yeah. 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 But um. Oh, and then I'm, I'm I got a thing too where I'm playing a '90s mom. 
It's an alien story. Oh, the same it. people. I know, I know. So there's a lot of stuff. It, it's fun because right now I'm quarantined. I can't do anything, but I still have all this stuff that I, that I did coming out. So. Yeah. And, <laughs> okay. and even just following you on Twitter and Facebook, we can get the links and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm really, I, I really, because I'm looking kind of forward count. to that exorcism in the air. I think oh, I know you cool. are. <laughs> All I had to do was say, oh, you don't want to see this. <laughs> hey, yes, I do. Is Linda, <laughs> is Linda Blair in it? No, that would oh. be great if she but was. Wouldn't funny if she was in it? I don't think she'll have anything more to do with any exorcist stuff. She's probably tired of it, yeah. I probably, probably. She she has a dog rescue. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, so no. she's good people, too. So even when she shows up to conventions and, and things like that, it's to make money for her dogs. Oh. Yeah, it's really sweet. That's fantastic. I really yeah. like the ones that love the dogs. Yeah. Because you know, yeah. I, I don't know if you can see my two babies walking through. Well, somebody they, passed behind you. Yeah. Went Saturday. They're like 80 something <laughs> pounds girlfriend and they think they can lay up in my bed yeah. with me. Awesome. And when stretch out. And I'm like, oh hell no. That's, and they that's just, amazing. the only thing is they're Labradoodles. I heard they're very good dogs and they are. Yeah. They're way better than Moochie. You got to meet Moochie. Moochie bit me. <laughs> he growled at you and it didn't, snapped it didn't you hurt. It didn't I, hurt, but I was too close to his attacked, mama. He attacked huh? people's feet. Yeah, yeah. But he ended up, um, uh, when I got these dogs, I wanted good natured dogs. And these dogs are so good natured, but they're a little clingy. They're, they're very what? clingy. Oh. They're constantly and constantly trying to take their nose to get my hand so I'll pet them. They just want attention, attention, attention. Is that because they were rescued dogs or just No, they're not rescued. Like I went straight to Oklahoma oh. to get them. They, oh. I met their mama and uh, she bred actually three litters with this particular mother, big old huge brown Labrador. And I guess the father was a, a white poodle. And uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're they're so delightful, but biggest pain is that they need my attention 24-7. The one thing about Moochie is Moochie could chillax with mom. You know what I'm saying? No yeah. fuss, no muss. <laughs> yeah, no, Moochie was a one-person dog. Was yeah, a... well, don't, man, don't mess with my mom. It's like mm -hmm. the dog loved attention, and the minute you walk past me, or you, if you got near my purse, he'd attack you, attack you, growl, and be mean. Yeah, I was just too close to you. Yeah, otherwise well, you know, I was fine, but not too close to Linda. That's no, no. <laughs> so so I want to know. Okay, so I want to know what you think of everything. You know, this is going to turn into I'm going to interview you because oh, okay, I'm okay. Okay. What I'm did you want to know? I want to know what you think is going on these days. Well, That's what are, everybody are you wants watching to my know. videos? Yes, I am. Okay, okay. What I think is, um, I think that he's going to lose by a landslide. Um, I think that it's already in progress, and I think this virus kind of exacerbated things. You think? Yeah, it's it exacerbated things, because people were like, literally, please, God, make him go away. Now, yeah, there's going to be the Trumpsters yes. that really, really want him, period. They just want him. That's all there is to it. They love him and adore him, but the good news is I'm, I read people all over the world. I, know. I read people that have family members that are we're middle of the road Republicans, eh, not going there again for Trump. It's and the good strange. news is Biden is sort of middle of the road Democrat. Right, so he's not so, going to scare people off right? yeah. in terms of being too liberal. Hopefully. And I also think that Biden, and I could be wrong, but this is what uh, the hit I'm getting, is that Biden is actually going to have Bernie do something significant within this administration. Like I Bernie's time's not up. No, I would imagine he would. However, but, it had been Hillary. No, she never liked him. But I really feel Biden mm -hmm. feels he has something to offer. So when He's Biden so announced this new administration, it's killer. It's killer. I believe that, yeah. Oh, it's going to rock. It's going to rock. So people will be excited. And then I feel this landslide and I feel absolute joy. I've been telling everybody from the beginning for the past three years, I started been doing these videos. People will be dancing in the street. I will be. I know I'm, I'll probably break down crying because it will I be was just going to say, I'll be laughing and crying because I'm crying sometimes anyway, just because I get overcome by what's happening. 
it's sort of like weird. Like right now he's trying to start a war with China. I, I know. And he fired the AG that said, we need more equipment for the hospitals. I know. Fired her because she's not agreeing with him. He's kind of, uh, he's cruel. It's like every day there's something like that, so. But what I see is that he lo loses by such a landslide. People always thought he'd leave before the end, which I mm -hmm. do see, but what I see is that he loses so badly that he can't claim it's bullshit, you know. He can't really? claim that it's rigged. What happens is he loses so badly that all of a sudden it's just like a skeleton crew just trying to keep business as usual. And then Biden's group comes in at the change of the guards. But I'm almost feeling uh, Trump won't have anything to do with it. Like he's like, F you guys. Oh, that sounds. Doesn't that sound like him now? Yeah, that be sounds so like... furious. And he'll think the other thing is right now he's making he's on the I see him calling McConnell. I see him thinking his people should speak out more about this fire and how what a wonderful president he is. You need to give me more compliments, and they're not doing that. Well, so this is the final, final. This is the clincher. This virus came to help knock him off too. Because if the, if we were middle of the road, we're not anymore. No, it's like he's catapulted out of the way. Yeah, the the issue was forced. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. But we used to talk all the time. We used to be on the horn about once every couple of weeks, and then we what happened is I took off with this. You got so busy that the last thing on earth I wanted to do is bother you after, because I know that you also have clients, and then you do this, and I just thought I am not gonna even bother her to say hello. I did a couple of times. I texted you just to say hi, but did um, I text you back? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I, you're just. Yeah, you're just so, so busy. And oh, so, I'm so sorry, girlfriend. But I'm, I, we got to be chit-chatting again. I think I said to you, I said, that I got to watch your videos. It's the only way I ever get to see you anymore. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> well, I'm, and then, you know, I started thinking with the shutdown, why don't I talk to a few of my friends, you know, Kabir, who I do mm -hmm. comedy with, Tris, who's that's right. a great friend, you. Mm -hmm. It's like, why don't I talk to some of my buddies and and everybody gets the flavor of the, you know, my, mm -hmm. my pet. Also, all the people that I talk to, all the customers, oh my God, girlfriend, they rock. There are mm -hmm. so many good people well, out there. You'll, you'll probably, a person like you will attract good people. You probably don't attract too many. Uh, no, no. And uh, boy, these guys really, if somebody starts acting negative, they're all over it. Good. I don't want to be too, I don't want to be like, you know, too adored because it's not me it's them you know yes. i'm not like right now a friend is talking about wanting to start up some some radio show and mm -hmm. he knows a lot of celebrities and i'm not i just don't want to do it i know that sounds Fine. terrible but because i don't need any more than i already you, have you didn't want to do this either and you got roped in. <laughs> i'm happy i'm happy and i i don't want it to be ruling me I don't want it to be how I live. I want it to be part of my life and it's so much fun. But the reason I'm doing this is because my guides have made it very clear. Mm -hmm. We're going through a transition. Oh yeah. And they've been telling me, I mean, I had this vision of St. Michael walking with a sword sparking off the ground. It's like, you guys we're it's a shift. And I actually thought it was an earth, a physical earth shift. It's not just that it's a shift of selective consciousness. It's us being more aware. This mm -hmm. is, there's no, this is not like 9-11 and guess what, it's over. And then no. we forget. This we will no, not, not forget. This we will not forget. And this president has caused such a, like a. <laughs> Everybody's got to wake up whether they want to or not. Yeah, yeah but we got to be careful too because Democrats can get a little too powerful sometimes. Yes, they act they like can. they're all that. Yes, they can. So it's up to the nation to keep people grounded, you know. No, and consider the earth. Always consider the earth because the earth will spit us out. Well, she said, she, you know, she said just now, it's like, I'm done with you guys for a little bit. I need a break. Mommy no, needs a break. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm <laughs> do this. And don't, I'm sick of the wars and, and rumors of wars, and you guys just knock yeah. this off. So, yeah. Well, she's going to, she's ascending too. The earth is a living being 
she's a, she, you know she's not gonna just gonna sit there like a rock she's alive too she right. wants to ascend you know yeah so this a lot is more volcano at volcanic action there's some pretty significant earthquakes taking place right now more towards like uh, japan and um puerto rico poor puerto rico <laughs> I read a client. Puerto Rico can't. Puerto, I need to do a whole thing just on Puerto they Rico. They can't catch a break. No, it's but ridiculous. You know what, they, even Obama like, apparently didn't really. Nobody's come forward in a way that they need, and I see them rising. Good. I see them significantly being a beautiful place where people want to hang. <laughs> well, I, I've never been there, but it is a place where people want to hang, especially if you're on the East Coast. That's a pretty quick trip and it was a very popular destination. Right. When I lived right. in New I York, people, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, so I, I'm not, but some people didn't even know that it was part of our country, so. <laughs> I know it is. I know. <laughs> oh, well. That's okay. We're going to get rid of all this ugliness. Yeah. Yeah, well, and I then, think that this guess is what I don't have to really do as many videos. I might actually do videos on well-being and adjusting, but I don't have to do because we are going to definitely start calming out. I'm looking for those made-for-TV movies that are getting ready to happen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, now this is a good idea though because um, a lot of people who were watching your videos didn't really know you, and so. This is a chance for people to see, you know, you, I, I don't, you know, just, this is Linda and she has friends and she has a life too. And she doesn't just come on to read cards and keep, keep you guys from, you know, us, us all from freaking out. Yeah. That's not the whole Linda. There's a whole yeah. person here that they get to see a different side of maybe. Right. And I've been very lucky, very lucky. And I have my sons and my, my life. My kids are doing good too, by the way. So this one time I call up and Linda's son says, you know, my mother's a very famous psychic and she reads a lot of famous people. Like, how dare you be calling my mother? <laughs> who, said, who said this? The young, um, 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 the young one, the young, the, the guy that was still living there when I was there. J Jacob. Jacob. He Jacob. said that to you? Yeah. Oh my God. I can't believe he would say something like that. Yeah, well, he was. He doesn't one. even believe in psychics. Well, that's what he told me. He's like bah humbug. He's like a scientist, you know. Well, and it's to your like, face, to your face, maybe, but that's. Oh, that's very interesting, girlfriend. Very I thought, interesting. I thought I told you that. I remember I, laughing. You about might have, it. you know, because I have that chemo brain, and I keep apologizing for it. I do, in fact. I don't know if it's my guides that cause this, but you know, after a reading, I tend to forget everything that's told to me. Well, so. you're kind of a conduit, so there's no reason for you to actually, I mean, Hold let's on, face it, we, we all want to think we're fascinating, but there's really no reason for you to retain most of that stuff. It's important <laughs> to us, but not to you. You know, yeah. there's no reason for you to remember right. that juicy, that you think is so juicy. It's like, I can't believe I told her that. And you're like, told me what <laughs> yeah, like, really <laughs> you remember when i told you i'm like no have i read you before yeah did anything come true you don't remember no no why would you no so sorry but listen girlfriend um thank you for doing this it was my pleasure you know it, anything anything you ever ask me to do i will do oh thank you joyfully thank because you. you're such a giver and I'm so lucky to have you in my life. You could play <laughs> Kellyanne Conway, but you're way prettier than her. Oh, thank, well, if I lost some weight, which I need to do anyway, and like got my hair, I don't know, I, I, bet, I, I, bet, I bet I could do it. That would be you fucking- be a bitch. I need to get a really mean part now. Because yeah. Because I've been moms and, you know, and, um, well, the one cougar thing that was, but she wasn't mean. So I need a really mean character, like a really ruthless, that's you could play her because you have that ability to like talk up. You know what I'm saying? You could, you could play her. I don't know why I know that because you've never been mean, but I just feel like you could spin it for everybody. You know, she has that way of spinning it. She's very smart. She's very smart. And if you see before she worked for Trump, she said, we can't have that guy. He's not presidential. And she just, she changed her tune like on a, on a dime. Yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, 
as an actor, you, you never judge the character that you're playing because they always have very good reasons for what they do. And right. they think that they're right. So if you can get into that mindset, then you can you're right. figure, yeah. figure out a way of why you think it's okay for you to do anything. Like it's the just, actor that did Cheney, I mean, that must have been, he was not, yeah. I, don't know, I never liked Cheney. I never felt comfortable around He's him. He's scary. Like He's it scary. was just, he wanted to be president. But you know, you could understand the real person, Dick Cheney, by watching the actor play him because you could see his thought process. You need not to agree with it, but you can see. Whereas just the person, you don't necessarily see what got him from A to B, but in the movie you did. Right. Uh, I love it, girlfriend. Me too. I missed you so much. I miss you too. Well, we'll, we'll talk after this. I'm going to we'll say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Goodbye. It was Bye, lovely. Bye, guys. Being, thanks for having me on your show. Thank um, you. I enjoy this guys, so much. I'll, don't worry. I'll put the link in. You guys check her out and I'll be watching these shows with you. Okay. Bye. Hold on. Bye. Like I, I'm going to, sorry. <laughs> I don't, oh, here we go. Here.